So expected returns are our best guess about what will happen in the future if we take a specific action. And they're based on the average outcome of taking that action a million different times, okay? a, a, a huge number of times in the future. And that's really the best we can do because we don't know the future. So all I can say is here's the range of potential things that might happen if I take an action. My best guess about what will happen will be the one that has the highest probability of happening in the future, and that's the probability weighted average of the outcomes in the future. Okay. And if that's not quite clear, it might help just to jump straight to the first example that we're going to work, uh, rather than uh, and then come back and finish uh, and then come back to this part of the lecture uh, as we talk about risk. And then you can see it play out in action. You can see the math and how it works. Um, and, and, and we'll talk a little, give a little more discussion. Okay? Uh, so if expected return is the average outcome, the risk is the range of potential outcomes given that we've taken a specific action, right? So in our coin flip example, the, the, the risk is the, the probability that we either win the dollar or lose the dollar. We say that it's the fluctuation in return and that's how much the actual outcome varies from the expected outcome, right? So risk is trying to understand how likely it is that we don't get what we think we're going to get, right? So if I take an action in the real world, right, there's a, a huge range of potential outcomes. Risk is how big that range actually is, right? And we can measure risk or, or we measure risk uh, using a... Um, uh, using a mathematical a probability formula called the variance, and we denote the variance as sigma squared. Uh, and, and then we take it a step further because what we're actually interested in is something called the standard deviation, which is the square root of the variance, uh, or just denoted as sigma. And the reason why we want the standard deviation and the reason why we consider the standard deviation to be the true measure of risk is one, because it's in percentage terms, and return is in percentage terms. And so we like to be able to talk about risk and return in the same terms. Uh, but two, it's because standard deviation has a lot of properties that make it very helpful for us when we're thinking about uh, risk in a, in, a, in a more comprehensive way. Right? It makes it easier to understand. So one of the things that we want to know about risk is how likely are the worst and best possible outcomes versus how likely are the outcomes that are right around what we expect, right? So let's say that uh, I'm thinking about uh, taking an action. So I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm gonna buy a stock and, and my best guess about the stock's future is that the stock will return 10% to me, right? So it's a pretty good outcome. Right? That's my best guess, that's the expected return. Risk is the probability that instead of getting 10%, uh, on the upside, maybe I get 50. It's a great, right? It's a great risk. On the downside risk, maybe I lose 40. That's risk, right? What's the spread of potential outcomes that might happen to me that aren't what I think is gonna happen? What I'd like to be able to know about that spread though is how likely those outcomes are. How likely is it that I get that plus 50 instead of getting say 11, which also isn't what I expect. I expect 10. So if I get 11, that's upside risk. It's just not a big one, right? If I get 15, that's upside risk. Again, it's just not a big one. So how likely is it that I'm very close to my, what I expect versus how likely is it that I'm very far from what I expect? And of course, likewise on the downside, how, how, what's the probability that I end up in that negative 50 space versus the probability that I end up in the 5% return instead of 10%? Which is still, it's not what I wanted, it's not what I expected, uh, but you know, losing, like, making 5% is a lot better than losing 50. Right? And standard deviation and risk can be contextualized like this. Um, and one of the ways that we can think about it, and, and one of the, the sort of mathematical truths about the standard deviation, and as a caveat, and this is sort of more than you need to know for this class, but this is only true for. Uh, for outcomes that are uh, that are probability weighted according to what we call the normal distribution, okay? uh, so there's lots of different probability distributions that describe the likelihood of all these outcomes. Uh, when we're talking about the stock market, we think that the normal distribution guides 
the probability weighting of these outcomes. Uh, and so then the standard deviation can be interpreted like this. Right? The standard deviation gives me a sort of set, um, uh, a, a set level of risk that I can add to my expected return. And based on formulas that have been developed long before us, and formulas that you won't need to know, by the way, uh, we can understand standard deviation using the following graph, right? So this is a graph of the normal distribution. It's also called the bell curve. Uh, you've probably seen it before. You've probably talked about it before, right? And what it tells us is uh, how, what the probability of getting outcomes very far from, the ex from our expected return is, right? So notice that it's divided into six different sectors. And with uh, the hump in the middle, that straight line that bisects the hump, right, right in the middle of the graph, that's the expected return line. So this is what the, we think our best guess about the outcome of this action is going to be. This is our 10% return on that stock. And then two bars on either side of it are in green. And notice that they take up a, a, a big majority of the interior area of that hump, right? The green lines, they, they, they document that one standard deviation uh, on either side of the expected return says that 68% of possible future outcomes fall within one standard deviation of the expected return. So what that tells us, and again, we'll, we'll go over this in more detail in, in a in a concrete example in, 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 in later in the example so that you can see how this plays out with real numbers, real, uh, real stocks. But what it tells us is that we have a 68% chance that the actual outcome falls very close to the expected outcome, right? which is what we hope, right? that our expected outcome uh, and the actual outcome are pretty close together, where well, that means we've done a good job predicting the future. Then if you see the next bars, the ones that are in dark blue that say 13.6, right, uh, that means that, that the, each bar is a standard deviation different from the mean. And again, we talk about what, this, what, that, what that means, um, but just think about it in terms of the likelihood that what actually happens is a medium amount different than what we thought. Right? The green bar is a little different than what we expect. The blue bar is a medium amount different than what we expect. The red bar is extremely different from what we expect. Right? And we see that the blue bar, right, if we add those two percentages together, we get 27 or so, that 27% of our outcomes uh, are going to be a medium, um, that's, that's such a weird thing to say, are, are, are more different from what we expect. And then if we look at the red bars, only 5% of outcomes are extremely different from what we expect. All right, so if we jump back to our stock example, 10% right? is that line right in the middle of the hump. That's our expected return. Plus 50 is in the red bar. Minus 50 is in the red bar on the other side. Only 5% of future outcomes will we get a, a return that is that good or that bad. And then plus 25 and minus 25, those are in the blue bars. And so in only 27% of outcomes will we get uh, returns that are that good or that bad. And then 15% and 5%, those are in the green bars. And 68% of the time, we will, uh, we will have an outcome that falls in the, into those green bars, a return that falls within those green bars. 